Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Bill Spicer. On this week's show, we're fishing the north shore of Lake Superior in Algoma country. We're gonna start in Wawa and fish the rivers all the way back to Sault Ste. Marie. It's gonna be a great show, so stay with us. We'll be right back. Today, the new Fly Fisher crew is fishing the north shore of Lake Superior. We travel along Highway 17, starting just outside of Wawa on the Mishapakotten River, then the Old Woman River, then the Sand River, and we finish up at the rapids of Sault Ste. Marie. Joining me today as guest co-host is John Babulik. John has spent many fish-filled days exploring the north shore of Lake Superior. Our first river is the Mishapakotten River just outside of Wawa. The river's name means Big Bluffs in Ojibwe and refers to the large hills located near the river's mouth. It didn't take long for the action to start. That one hit. That was a good hit. Again, just swinging it through dead drift, egg patterns, and that's what we're trying to find is an aggressive response. And this guy is pretty beat up. But not beat up enough to hit. Like I'll tell you, look at that. Hold him up right. He's pretty beat up from spawning run. There he goes. Yeah. Fall time in Algoma country. Can't beat it. Check my rigging after catching a fish. They, they scrape across rocks. Just run your fingers along the, the line like that. Feel any nicks, change your knot or change your tippet. The flies that, that you must have when you come to Algoma country are a good solid selection of egg flies. I prefer chartreuse, pink, and orange as, as staple colors for egg patterns in a variety of shades. I often bring a selection of cactus flies with some sparkle color to them and a selection of smaller micro eggs for fussier fish. Also, I bring along a good selection of large flies, big closer minnows and bigger spay patterns in bright colors, preferably chartreuse and blue uh, and darker purple. A good selection of nymphs is also an important set of flies to have. I prefer hare's ear nymphs in olive and in the traditional tan color along with woolly buggers and an assortment of small spay flies when fishing the St. Mary's Rapids. And again, the males seem to be the ones. They're aggressive today. I have yet to hit a hen, so, which is good. I don't want to hit the hens. I want to leave them where they are. But this guy here ate it right up. Hmm. 
we go. There you go, little guy. Come on. You can do it. There we go. One. <laughs> now, one of the simple patterns we all learned when we first started tying flies, a woolly worm. A black body, you got a, uh, a hackle palmered through to make it look like legs and a bit of a red tail. Now, as soon as I switched over from the egg fly to this, they turned on. They, it, it must irritate them more than the eggs do. So, woolly worms. This is about a size uh, 10. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. This is such a deadly method. Just your indicator, split shot, either egg patterns, or in this case, a woolly worm, which is, which is a stonefly imitation. Whoa, get out of them rocks. Get out of them rocks. <laughs> Okay, there he is there. Get out here, close to the... Oh, there we go, got him. Now, again, aggressive male. It looks like I just had him too. Woolly worm, and there you go. Nice, aggressive male. Get him back in the water. And away you go. He'll sulk there for a bit. The nice thing about fishing the North Shore of Superior and fishing all the rivers under the highways is, I've been here an hour and a half. You've seen how many fish I've taken. Now we're going to move on to the next river and see what we get. It's, it's, it's a big surprise every time you move. Oh, just wonderful. There are two setups we use today. The first is a floating line to a 9-foot leader with 16 inches of 6-pound fluorocarbon tippet attached and then the fly. Split shot is added just above the knot connecting the leader and the tippet. The second is the same as the first, only we add a strike indicator at two times the depth of the water. The next river we visited was the Old Woman River, and it was just 20 minutes down the road from the Mishapagotten River. We immediately found one large pod of fish, but the water was low and extremely clear. This meant the fishing is going to be tough. If you can see the fish clearly, this means they can also see you. Change. Just a, the slightest twitch that would lead me to believe that something has picked it up. And I'm staying on this side of the pod. And just, we're below them somewhat. Just to start out and, right. and downstream of them because what I'd hope is that we can hook a few on the edges of the pod. Before you get right into it. Before we get right into it. Fish on. Good, Good job, Bell. Feels like a tail. Yeah, that is the one problem when you got that many fish. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's there it. You go. got off. That's it right there, Bill. There you 
you got him that time. I seen you pull him out. Yep. Good man. There we go. You know you got him right at the end of the tail, at the at the end of the, the pod there? Yeah. He took the last fish. Yeah. He took the nymph too, Bill. Did he take the nymph? Okay. Took the nymph right in the nose. Small, bright pink. It's amazing how strong they are for their size. Absolutely. They, they, they're they a wonderful fish. Oh, and you're, oh, I just had one on. <laughs> this is an this is an incredibly strong fish for his size. It's hard to believe this is a quite a fast action seven eight weight rod in about a nine foot six length for a fish that size to put a bend on it right in the nose. Very very typical east shore of Lake Superior Algoma country pink salmon. Algoma country pink salmon just 200 yards from the highway. We better let him go so he can go on to make more pinks. The farther we traveled upstream, the lower the water got. It was getting late in the day, so we decided to travel to the next river along the highway, which is a sand river. The conditions on the sand were extremely low, so after a short time we decided to call it a day and head back to our cottage to plan for the next day in Sault Ste. Marie. After a good night's sleep, John and I were eager to get to the Sioux Rapids. We thanked our hosts and headed down Highway 17 to Sault Ste. Marie. We checked into our next cabin and then headed to the Rapids. Well, we've been along Highway 17. The fishing's been tough. So where do you go when the fishing gets tough? Back to a favorite haunt. Now we're on the St. Mary's Rapids now, and people that have watched our show before know this is one of my favorite spots to fish. I'm back in old reliable hole. We're gonna try it for a little while here. And John says he knows some other holes on the rapids that maybe I don't know about. So I'm really excited about this. We have a pile of fish in front of us, so this should be good. There you go, you got yourself a, a male this time. Oh, and he's gonna go for a run. All right. All right. St. Mary's. Now look at that, that's, yeah. And you might have to go for a run because if he gets any farther. <laughs> There's a real advantage to having a uh, large arbor reel here because when they do turn and start to head back upstream, once you have them on the reel, you can pick up pick up a fair bit of line quickly and a long heavy rod is really an advantage with these fish. Sometimes when they get past you it's best to turn the rod downstream and then they're fighting you and the current at the same time. Oh big Chinook I right see that. beside yeah, it. A big Huge Chinook. Chinook. Again. Love that. Whoa. Oh that's too and bad. He got off. <laughs> well that's the way it is. That's 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 part of the gig. That's just part of the game but Shows you how pugnacious they can be. They're uh, good fighters, aren't they? They're ridiculously strong for their size and a whole lot of fun. Now, John, up here this, this year we run into a lot of pinks, but other years you can run into Chinooks and, and Cohos. What recommendation would you give for the folks at home on rods and reels? Well, as a minimum, a nine to 10 foot seven weight is a good place to start. I prefer, certainly, in the fall you can run into a lot of wind and definitely a uh, an eight weight or even heavier is is not overkill for these fish you're still gonna have a great time landing the smaller pinks and uh, and not wear them out and if you do get a big chinook or coho or even a steelhead there's a, a much better chance that you're going to be successful in landing that fish quickly and releasing it uh, 
as smoothly as possible. Uh, what about reels as far as uh, uh, reels are concerned? Now I like the large arbor but is that necessary? It's not really necessary. I certainly prefer a large arbor because sometimes the fish do turn and run to you and when they do it's nice to be able to pick up a lot of line but having said that I've used traditional level wind reels up here too just with plenty of success. Right. Great. Smooth drags though, that's in case the, the Chinook's head. And these pinks will run your drag on you. We found that out. So Absolutely. Smooth, drags, that smooth drag and, and ideally a rim that you can palm. Okay, when, when fishing migratory fish, especially in rivers like the St. Mary's River where there's a lot of current and a lot of rocks, the most important thing to do is to try and get a drag free drift as possible. A lot of mending and focus on the tip of the line or the indicator, being as careful as possible that if there's even a hint of movement, for whatever reason, set. The, the best success comes when, when you think there may be a fish. It doesn't matter if there's a bit of a rock, you can pick up again and set, cast again. Concentrate on the line, that's it. Set. Fish on. Good man. <laughs> so what I did there, I mended over, mended over, mended over made sure that I had good slack in the line, and when, when I saw even the tip of the line just make a slight curve, I set the hook. Oh, good hen. Another good hen. Boy, we've taken a good number of hens today. Just a nice little hen, fairly fresh. There we go, chartreuse cactus fly. Algoma country pink salmon. Love it. The pinks here in the Sioux are much larger than they are further up in the north. Why, I don't know, but they seem to be larger. And again, another male, and you gotta gain control of them. If you don't, they'll be in that fast water and gone on you. So believe it, they're, they're, they're small, but they, they, they really, really fight hard. Gain control, get my net ready again. You go there, buddy. One after the other in the St. Mary's Rapids. I get a big male. Nice male. I'm just going to let him tire himself out a bit in the main current before I start to move him over to shore. Good fish though. So I took a few on a chartreuse color cactus fly and then switched. Just give them a little side pressure, wear them out a little bit. Nice big hump back. Pink salmon. Just take my time. I'm applying side pressure. just about done. Sort of dwarfs mine, that's for sure. <laughs> All right. Wowee, that's a big fish. That is a big, big pink. Can you get a hold of him? Yeah, I can get him. Dynamite. There we go. <laughs> Double header. Double header, you gotta like it coming to the suit. Wow. Beauty. Wowee. 
Yeah. Yours, yours is apt. It's wonderfully, wonderfully big. The way mine goes. Mine's gone too. <laughs> <laughs> this trip has been great, hasn't it? All along the North Shore, probably the most beautiful area I've been in my life. Uh, you think you're on the Canada's west coast when you're going to North Shore or Superior. And then you end up in Old Faithful, the rapids of Sault Ste. Marie. Mary. Oh, just incredible. Gotta love it. Love it. <laughs> Another good pink salmon. Fish on. Oh, while John fights his, double. I take one too. <laughs> now mine's just a baby compared to his. <laughs> oh man, this is good. This is so much fun. <laughs> And I got another hand, and it's another good hand. And another hand, but away she goes. And then John can go and fight his fish. <laughs> no, I might want you to slop this one into the net. It's a good oh, one. Oh, it's a good one, is it? Okay, I'll get my net. They got a great big tail on them, big powerful tail. I just don't want to bang them up against the rocks. Now look at that. Look at that. Look at and that. there's that cactus egg pattern that you got. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, big, big male. Nice, big pink. Look at the teeth. Big on male. It. Oh, yeah. He's going to give him a minute to find his bearing. And he's off. <laughs> oh, he's still right there. <laughs> man, oh, man. What a well, great we, time. We sort of beat him up today, haven't we? I think, <laughs> I think we have. Oh, oh I think man. We have. Man, you've got to make your next trip to the North Shore of Superior and Algoma country. For more information on today's show and other shows in our series, visit us on the web at www.thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us. Tight lines. We'll see you next week.